have these $1,000 shipper computers in their pocket filled with beautifully designed software, probably much of it designed by people in this room. And then they go to their job, and then they use some software that their company gives them, and says, what the hell is this? This is crap. I don't like this. And those people, Workers Unite, are having an impact on the purchasing decisions of what their companies buy for their internal software. It's a real issue. And I said, well, OK, you've piqued my interest. Um, I said, but I, I don't think you realize how hard it's going to be. Because it's not, um, we can't do it by drawing really good pictures. Like, you're, like, when there's a company that's making uh, software with user experience that maybe could be improved, um, it's often not because they don't have good designers, good engineers, good product managers, or good leadership. It's just because they haven't made it a priority because their culture has prioritized other things. And so what proceeded was a long conversation where I just kept saying, like, well, I don't believe you. And I would ask kind of probing questions. And they would say, no, we'll do that. And I was like, I don't believe you. And it's not that I didn't believe that they thought they were telling the truth. It's that I did not believe that they understood the magnitude of the change they were truly asking for. That when I actually said, look, here's what we got to do, they would say, are you crazy? We're not doing that. And that would be sad. But at the end, they said, look, you can doubt us or not, or believe us or not, but do you want the job or not? <laughs> I was like, shit, what do I do? And I kind of figured there was like a 15% chance that they were telling me the truth. So I said, OK, I'll take it. And uh, uh, a couple weeks in, I'm talking to someone who's been there for a while, senior designer there. And they said to me, well, you know what job you got. And I said, something tells me you're going to explain it to me? <laughs> uh, and he said, yes, yes, I am. And I said, uh, OK. I, I mean, I, hey, close mindset, man. I'm eager to be educated. And so he says, you got the last job at the last company. And I said, I don't know what you mean. He said, you want to do something big. You want to create a design culture and a design system design team, design sensibility from scratch for a company that has, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 million users. He said, and there are only seven companies in the world where you can do that. Apple, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Salesforce, Amazon, and Oracle. And he said, and these six already have a design culture, a design system, a design sensibility, aesthetic, and, and a pretty established design team. Many of you are probably members of those teams. He said, but at Oracle, we're behind. And that is made for a perfect storm of a company that is deeply excited about re-engineering itself, reinventing itself, and re-helping the world reimagine who Oracle actually is. Because right now, everyone's like me. They're like, database? I don't know. And Oracle's at this inflection point where people are wondering, is Oracle going to be, like Oracle was a, a, an icon for 40 years, but is it going to be an icon for the next 40? He said, you got here at just the right time where you get to do something at that scale. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> In the three weeks. Then I went to my little Airbnb, because I was down in, I live here, down in Redwood City. And uh, my first thought was, oh my god, this is the job I've always wanted. And then my immediate second thought was, I am not nearly talented or smart enough to do this job. Uh, but then my third thought was, I will hire a lot of people who are way, way, way better and smarter and more talented than me. And sure enough, there was another job uh, available uh, to be kind of my partner in crime in leading design at Oracle, available. And they came to me and they said, hey, Hillel, who should we hire for that job? And I said, and I, I uh, before I was at Oracle, I was at Microsoft for a little bit. And before that, I ran a, uh, I, I co-founded a, a, a little agency called Jackson Fish Market here in Seattle, a little creative agency. We designed brand and software and all this stuff. I said, well, the person you want is the better half of the co-founders of Jackson Fish Market. And they said, isn't that you? And I said, oh, no, 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 it is not. 
And they're like, wait a minute, why didn't you tell us that? And I said, you did not ask. <laughs> and I wanted the job. So Jenny Lamb, who I hope some of you may know, who's amazing and who was at Amazon, uh, leading a team working on Alexa, device design, UI design, all that. Uh, they convinced her to come over. And I was like, oh, thank God, we're not screwed. <laughs> and then together, Jenny and I have convinced a whole bunch of people to come over, but not nearly enough. Yeah. And I am reminded of, uh, well, I, I'll, I'll just tell you that the th before I, I kind of put a little grace note on it, because I'm almost out of time. The thing that we are getting to do, which is redesign an entire $170 billion company. Okay? And I don't mean just the UI. I mean the brand, I mean the marketing, I mean the advertising, I mean the events, and of course, an enormous amount of user interface that you would be shocked to realize how much there is. We get to do this all from scratch at a scale that you simply can't do in most jobs. And it is something you can't learn how to do in school or anywhere but in this moment. And these moments, they're generational. If we went over to Google and said, let's redo material design, if they didn't laugh at me for saying that, they would say, why? And they'd be right. Or if you went to Salesforce and said, let's redo Lightning and redo it all, they would say, why? Same thing at all these companies. They, they, they got their thing going. Oracle has this opportunity to reinvent it all. And the customers are demanding it, and the company, all the way up to Larry Ellison, has said this focus on design and telling a new story about what Oracle's going to be in the future, and putting design and design thinking and design leadership at the center of it, this is one of our top three priorities for the entire company. This is how we're going to differentiate ourselves. So, and we have, I, I mean, I cannot tell you how much work we have. A lot. And so I'll leave you with this thought. When the person who called me originally to say, hey, why don't you come talk to us about working at Oracle, we had this long phone conversation, and at the, uh, at, we talked for like an hour. I was in, a, uh, I was working at Microsoft at the time, and I remember I was in one of those little phone rooms at Microsoft, which is probably not what they're intended to be used for. Uh -huh. I'm talking to a competitor about jumping ship. Uh, I didn't give out any secrets or anything, but I just, it was odd. And uh, the guy, the, the person called me, we had this long, intense conversation, and at the very end, he, he, like we said goodbye, and he's like, oh, hold on one sec, I just have one question for you. I said, sure, what is it? And he says, you got a bunch of friends, right? <laughs> I was like, like, huh? He's like, you know, design friends. And I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, I got a few. He's like, OK, good, because you got to get them to all come over. So what I'm asking is, <laughs> uh, will you be my friend? <laughs> fancy new, like, shirt thing. It is a sound effect. And uh, they're out there, and they have little brochures, they'll take your info, and yes, we are, we are, can I be any more clear? We are recruiting. <laughs> Hardcore. All right, so go talk to fucking meet the team.